Hello fellow miners and welcome to the Rock and Stone channel, your source for all things Deep Rock Galactic. I'm your host Werewolf and today we're going to be going over the Space Rig. It's the starting area of the game where you'll set up everything you need to begin a game of Deep Rock Galactic. When you spawn in, you'll start here, your personal bay. In the story, it's basically your home within the game and where you start out. So let's get started so you too can mine minerals and fight bugs with your dwarven brethren. The first thing you'll see is a set of terminals for choosing your character, their perks, and a quick join panel if you want to jump right in. So let's do that. Let's jump right in. The quick join panel's right here. You select this screen and it shows you all the games that are available to you. Now this is if you just want to jump right into the game, you don't have any friends that you want to play with currently, you don't want to play solo, you just want to find some people and you want to get right into the game and get going. Next over here is the collect character selection screen. From this you select your character. Currently Deep Rock Galactic has four characters that you can currently choose from. The Driller, the Engineer, the Gunner, and the Scout. It'll show you your level, what you're currently wearing, and give you a little description here on the right about what each character can do. If you come out of that and come over here, this is your mission statistics screen. It shows you the number of missions you've done, your solo missions, mission time, distance travel, enemies killed, your minerals you've mined, and on the right side of that there, it shows your individual statistic in each of those categories for each dwarf. Now if you go into this, you're going to see those statistics listed out a little bit more uh, a little bit more in detail. You can select each particular one and see what each one does just like you could on the main screen, but that's not the main reason that we're here. What we really want to look at are the milestones and the perks. The milestones are different objectives that you can complete within the game, and each of those will give you a certain number of perk points. For instance, here, collect eight Holomite ob objectives. You want to do that and complete each of those, and it'll give you two of these perk points. So what are perk points you do, might, you might ask? The perk points are right here, where you can spend these. You get different types of perks that'll help you out during the game, such as being able to deposit faster, uh, help revive your teammates, take less fall down damage, move faster on zip lines, do a little bit more damage when you hit people. Once you got your perk setups, we're going to go out into the space rig. Your personal bay is right behind you, and these empty bays are where other players will come in. The med bay is where you'll spawn if, God forbid, you complete a mission, but die in the process. If everyone dies, or you die and everyone makes it through, you're going to spawn in here, and it'll show you this little health insurance information, which is a very entertaining screen, shows you how many times you've been down, how much you drink and a little health insurance information, which can be anything from no health insurance to too dangerous for pants. So now we're going to go back out into the space rig and see what's available to us. As we can see, there's the drop pod for the mission and all these terminals. Now this terminal here on the right is your tutorial. If you haven't done that and you're new to the game, you're going to go into here and it'll launch that tutorial and it'll teach you how to play the game. But we're going to assume you already know that. So you come in down here and you have all these terminals. The first one is the accessory shop. Now the accessory shop is where you're going to purchase all of your cosmetics for the game. For instance, you can change your skin color, you can change your hair colors, you can choose different sets of armor which you can unlock with either a certain number of credits or a certain number of credits and minerals which you'll get within the game. And from here, all of your cosmetics are unlocked. You can switch through the different types of uh, characters that you have and you can unlock specific cosmetics for each of those characters. And when you're done with that, you can come over here to the employee wardrobe. This will show you everything that you currently have purchased. For instance, I have one headwear purchased for this guy and not much else. I got these skin colors unlocked that I can choose from, one set of eyebrows, a couple different sets of armors, and just like in the previous screen, you can switch between your different classes and you can go through and pick what you want to have your character look like while you're playing the game. So after we've done that, we're going to come over to the equipment screen. Now this is a very important screen because this is where everything is set up on your dwarf before he goes down for a mission. 
your main primary weapon, your secondary weapon, your pickaxe, your flare, which you have available to you to light up the room. Uh, your special ability is right here, and you have different things depending on your class. For instance, the driller has the power drills and the satchel charge, the engineer the platform gun and his sentry gun, the gunner who has a zipline gun and a shield generator, and the scout with the grappling gun and the flare gun. From here, you can do upgrades to your different weapons. Each of these upgrades are purchased for a certain amount of credits and or your minerals, which again, you get in game. As you unlock these, the more you unlock, the more skins you can unlock, which you can select here. So you can change the look of what you've got. The more of these you purchase, the more of them you'll unlock. So for instance, I've unlocked one, two, three, four, five of the different upgrades for my weapon, and that has gotten me to this point. If I unlock two more of these, then I'll get my next skin. All of your information can be found here. It shows you what kind of things your gun does, what changes each particular uh, modification makes to it, such as hollow point bullets here. We see adds a little bit more weak point damage, adds takes away some armor break, puts some fear into some things. Uh, everything is shown here for you, so you can kind of customize your gun for your personal playstyle. The same goes for your special abilities. All of those are here. Of course, we don't have skins for those. And then your armor, as you unlock these, you get more and more health. So health is very important in the game because it helps you last a little bit longer along with your shields and keeps you from dying. So you don't necessarily have to upgrade these, but it's probably a good idea to get as much health as possible. So as much as you can get, you know, the better. Over here, as I said before, this is where your perks are. So your perks, you'll click on these and you'll see all the ones that are available to you. You can change these, make them whatever you'd like them to be. And then each of these are unlocked depending on the level of your particular dwarf, which we'll cover all these things a little bit more in detail in other videos. And you unlock more of these perk points as you go, and then you can promote your scout, which means you get to level 25, you start them over again, and then you get one more perk point. So after we've done our equipment, let's say we don't have all the minerals we need. We go over here to the Mineral Trade Terminal. Now this terminal isn't unlocked at the very beginning of the game. If you don't have it yet, then that means you have to complete some missions in order to do it. But for now, we can see that here you can buy and sell different minerals and exchange them for what you might need. Sometimes it's best just to get what you need in the game, but sometimes you just need that one extra little bit of uramide or cropper or pearl or jadas, and that's going to allow you to get the cosmetic or weapon upgrade you need. Now, if you're going to do that, you're going to be doing that over the assignment board, but before we do that, let's say you're playing solo, but this here allows you to modify your drone. This drone is something that follows you around while you're playing single player, and you can upgrade it and give it different abilities depending on what your singular playstyle is when you're playing alone. Now let's say your mineral trade isn't open. Where do you go to fix that? Well, you go over here to the assignment board. On this assignment board, you're going to be certain things are going to be available to you. As you can see, most things are kind of, you know, like, I don't want to say grayed out because they're not really grayed, but kind of red it out. And then you have these. Each of these you can choose to select as your assignment. So we're going to upboard this for a moment so that you can see. I have these things available to me. They're kind of outlined in yellow. So these that are outlined in red you can't use, but the ones that are outlined in yellow that you can. So you've got things like your weekly assignments, uh, upgrades for your weapons, uh, unlocking the mineral trade board. Each of these are going to require three different missions in order to get them. So what we're going to do first, we're going to select, well, we want to take this breach cutter. We want to upgrade our weapon for the engineer. So I'm going to accept this assignment. And this little thing's going to flash right here. This is an egg hunt mission. So where do we go to get that mission? Well, of course, the mission terminal. From the mission terminal, what we can see are the different types of missions that are available to us in the many different biomes that there are. Sometimes you're going to see these as a scanner out of range. Those are basically areas that you can't go into because they're currently changing. 
what happens is, is over time, these missions will change, and the procedural generation of the game will create different caves for you. So it's basically resetting these areas. But this one right here is flashing, so this is what we need. And right here we see the egg hunt. This is the mission that we need. Now, there are several different types of missions available in each biome, and there are four of them generally, and those are the salvage operations, where you pick up different mules, the egg hunt missions, where you collect eggs, mining missions, where your goal is to collect different types of minerals, and the point extraction. Each of these missions will have, on your right here, you can see a primary mission, such as getting the Arquark, and then the secondary mission of collecting Distrum. It shows you the length and complexity of each of those caves. And once we've decided what we want to do, we click on that. And here, we can join a game that is currently in progress, if there's one available. We can host a public game, where people can come in and join you. You can host a private game, where you can invite your friends, or you can go at it solo. So for now, we're just going to click this so that we can see what we're going to do. It shows you what you need to do for that mission, and it gives you a chance to change what the challenge rating is. Now, this is what makes your game more difficult. Hazard rating 2 is the standard hazard rating, and as you can see, your bonus for each of those things changes because, because you know, different difficulties, more bonus. So, as you can see, I haven't unlocked Hazard, hazard Level 5 yet. That's something that we're going to have to do in one of our missions, but for now, we're just going to say 3, and we're going to click Confirm Mission, and now, Time to get to work, team. the drop pod is ready. So when we're ready to go, we just climb into the drop pod, and it starts a countdown. Initiating. You can jump out of that, of course, if you're not ready to go, and we're not, because we need to check out the rest of the space rig. So what do we do here? Oh, look at this. We've got the abyss bar. This is an area where you can party and hang out with your friends before the mission starts. You can start some music. And dance around with your friends. Stop it if you don't like it. And then you can come over here to the bar. Now the bar will give you options to buy different types of drinks, which will give you different types of benefits. And the specials change. So on this one, Red Rock Blaster, for instance, gives us 30% more health, costs a certain amount of credits. When you purchase this, at the time you purchase it, round of Red Rock Blaster. It will give you a number of mugs equal to the number of players. So if you've got people coming in, you might not want to do this until you're ready to go because, well, I mean, you don't want your friend to miss out on a beer, right? So now we can come back over here and listen to a little more music. You gems my ass. Party and drink. And, of course, what's being a dwarf without drinking a little ale? Get in my gut don't need that cup anymore. Over here we can come over and we can, well, let's play some games. Oh, let's see if we can get it in there. Hey, at some points, this little button blows up the barrel if something happens. So now we've covered all the stuff that, you know, this is the stuff you need to play the game, but there's some fun things in here as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to go upstairs and uh, these little platforms go up and down and take you to the different levels in the space rig. Now let's go up top here and see what we can find. Oh, what do we have here? Mission control, yeah. I want to go talk to management, but I can't. Nor can I go in the shooting range. We can go over to the top hangar, but we'll do that later. Let's check out the memorial hall. Quiet and show your respect to the fallen. The Memorial Hall is where we honor the fallen. Feel free to walk around and pay your respects. Now each of these statues will unlock when you reach a certain level. I have most of these unlocked, but I can turn them to gold. We salute the fallen heroes. And we come over here. And to those that helped build the place.
and this shows when each of the statues are unlocked. Look at that view. The Fallen. Leave no dwarf behind. The motto of Deep Rock Galactic. Don't want to leave any of our friends behind, so let's see what else we've got up here in this level. We can take it up to that top level there. Oh, and kick the cans. That's always fun. Walk around here. Kick another can out of the way. Oh, there's Hoxus. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. What's this? Gravity rear calibration. Don't touch. I don't think so. Restarting the gravity generator. Let the good times roll! So, just some fun stuff you can do while you're waiting around. See Hoxus is over there, ready to go. Ready to drop into the space rig. And that's really it for the space rig. Rocket stone! And we're ready to go on a mission, so hopefully Please don't kick the barrels this has helped you. Barrels and, launch thrusters do not mix. and you'll be better for it. Hopefully you understand the space rig a little bit more. Complete. Gravity returning to nominal levels. You can run around with your friends and have some fun when you're waiting, but, you know, I think we're ready to take on a mission, so hey, it's been good, everybody. Secret Come back to the Rock and Stone channel to learn a little bit more. Hopefully this has been informative for you and helps you understand the space rig. But now, it's time to go kill some bugs, so we gotta get out of here. This has been Werewolf, and feel free to come back to the channel, check it out, see what other tutorials we have, and leave no dwarf behind. Leave no dwarf behind. Rock and stone by the beard. Get Have fun getting rich mining minerals and killing bugs. Until then, ah! have a good day.